Very good point. Um, as we said uh, earlier in the show, we've got a pair of tickets to give away tonight for the Reading game this Sunday. 07557 is the number. Oh, I better finish the number. 07557 435 710. Tony, looking back to the summer, uh, the tour of Asia, the sign ins, the updated and improved training ground. You did a hell of a lot of work, or when I say you, you and the rest of the team did a hell yeah. of a lot of work. I, mean, I think in one year we've we've accomplished a lot. We've we set ourselves some targets. We said we were going to do some things: um, the training ground, beefing up the staff, uh, making the club a little bit more globally appealing, and, and, and reaching out to a bigger fan base. Uh, working on the academy, yep. bringing back. So we we've done a lot in in 12 months, and we're making progress on other fronts. We just got to get some results now. Can you put it into perspective? Also, sorry to interrupt. When you went on the Asia tour, mm. did it take you by surprise? It, it may not take you by surprise, but I'm sure all the staff that went out there were absolutely gobsmacked with all the, the sort of fans. I mean, that's that Surabaya there. game. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, was I, like being in Istanbul. <laughs> I, mean, I think it? even the players were were, were caught. Oh. You know, um, they were. All, I remember them. One of the things I'll remember for a long, long time is all the players lining up taking pictures of the stands. Of the crowds. And yeah, yeah, I think being greeted by 6,000 motorcycles in, in Surabaya Airport. And the warmth and the enthusiasm for QPR was, was, was something else. Um, so, yeah, it, did, it, it took me by surprise as well. To oh, be right, fair enough. You know. Some of our UK-based fans, some of our uh, London-based fans, English-based fans might say, but that's not important. What's important is the here and now. What's important is the Saturday afternoon. But there is that importance, isn't there, in terms of what we are trying to do because of the grand plans you have for this football club? Yeah. Look, the most important thing, let's not kid ourselves, is what happens on, on the pitch mm. uh, for the 11 players. But if you don't build the periphery, if you don't build the right structure, I always keep saying you've got to build the right structure, then a lot of the hard work on the pitch goes to waste. Yeah. They've got to go hand in hand. Um, and... Uh, you know, they're equally as important on, on some occasions. But let's not kid ourselves, we can be the greatest marketing club in the world. But if we don't win games, it's irrelevant. How proud are you, Dan, when you go back to Malaysia and, and Asia and you see little kiddies that are knee-high running around in QBR shirts? Because yeah, there's, there's plenty of them. It's, fa it's fantastic. It's a fantastic feeling. Even down to, you know, I walked in uh, to my friend's house the other day and uh, they were playing FIFA 13. And... Uh, the boys were fighting over who would be QPR. Fantastic. Um, it's, it's a fantastic feeling, and, and a lot of these will be future fans. Good. Um, there's a couple of questions that, that the fans have sent in. Harvey, via email, Harvey Stevens has said, Tony, if you could bring one player to the club in January, who would it be and why? <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, it's a tough one, and I'm going to take the fifth. Uh, because if I mention a player... It'll be all over the You'll press be linked tomorrow. To him tomorrow. What, what kind <laughs> of player, though? The price might go up. <laughs> what kind of player do you like as a chairman? A wholehearted? I mean, you've said to me before, you love the, the determination and the drive of a you Jamie know, Mackey, for example. Yeah, uh, Jamie, I've got to say, the player that stood out to me, who I, I've never met before until recently, Ryan Nelson. Yeah. He kind of epitomizes um, a lot of what the first question, I think, yeah. asked. You know, it, I think even though he, he has only been a short time at QPR, I mean, when we lose, you really see him disappointed. Yeah. Um, he's 110%, 24-7, um, wants to win and committed to the club. Great personality um, and a fantastic professional. We're going to get on to a couple of the tough questions now, ones that you've said that you'll answer because that's the kind of man you are. We don't even want to contemplate going down and it's not on anybody's radar at the club, certainly not on the managers, the players or yourselves. But in a worst case scenario, will we be financially stable if the, uh, if the very worst does happen and we are relegated? Yeah, I mean, I re refresh everyone's memory. If they do. It's not one of your questions to win the two tickets, but I trained as an accountant first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, you know, numbers are close to me and uh, as an accountant, you have to prepare for every, every sense. It's... It's silly to live in La La Land and say, no, it can't happen. Valencia win the Champions League, and then the next season they got relegated in the, in the Spanish League. People here will look at Portsmouth, they'll look at Leeds, for example. Exactly. So, um, And those comparisons are being brought to me all the time. Um, so what makes us different from a Leeds or Portsmouth? Uh, uh, that's what makes us different from a Portsmouth, that say. <coughs> well, I, I can't... Because fans do concern themselves. Yeah, I can't that. comment on... Cause I, I, it's yeah. a, I don't know what happened at Portsmouth or Leeds, but one... One says that they they built such a high wage bill that when they went down it was it was problems. Um, number one, we have tremendous assets 
in the club. The players have tremendous value, which uh, if you were to say uh, you needed to offload some players, they're players that would have a, a readily market. Uh, two is we, we know the P&L, we know the cash flow, we know the parachute payments, and um, you know the club will not get into the position that well, I've been led to believe it at Portsmouth at Leeds, mm. I mean, but it's not fair for me to comment yeah. on those clubs yeah. because I, I don't actually know. I was only doing that because obviously fans make a comparison. Yeah, but I think I can, you know, and so far, whatever I've said, we've delivered um, in terms of what I can control. Mm. I can't control what's yeah. on the pitch. And long may that continue. Yeah, um, in that, you know, I don't think any fan should worry about it. I think we've got Gareth on the line. Gareth, good evening. Hello. Gareth, good evening. You're live on London calling with Tony Fernandez, Pete Davis and myself. Um, got a question for the okay. chairman? Please. Fire away. Um, my first quick, well, the question really is, I think last season and this season so far, red cards have cost us big time. Um, I just want to know if Tony thinks um, that we have a discipline, discipline problem um, and what, you know, what needs to be done about it because it has cost us points over, over the season and a half. Yeah. I mean, I think some of the red cards were st stupid and naive. Stefan would be an uh, example, I guess, yeah. and he's just admitted that to us yeah. live on London Corner. And, uh, you know, and some were bad discipline. Um, yep. I think there's, there's very little as a chairman I can do. I mean, it, that's the responsibility of the manager uh, to get the message across to the players. But, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's an odd one because we don't get many yellow cards. We're, we're not a team that dives and uh, yeah. you know, looks for penalties and rolls around. In fact, Cissé's red card was, you know, if he rolled around, um, probably the Wolves player would have been sent off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he when jumped, he raised his hand, he yeah. jumped up and grabbed the player's neck, <laughs> which yeah. was probably not what you wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, that was ill discipline. Um, so it's frustrating, though, isn't it? It is frustrating. But I mean, as I said, if you look at it, we actually are a fairly disciplined team. If you look at our performance at Arsenal. You know, for 85 minutes, it was it was very well controlled and well disciplined. I don't think maybe there was one yellow card, but yeah. uh, we haven't been a team of getting many yellow cards. But we've had obviously tremendous red cards. So you know, I think people are learning. People are much cautious, and I think you know, if you look at the um, the two red cards we've had this season, they they haven't been ill discipline. Diacartes is is in naivety in the way he was tackling. And enthusiasm, yeah. and then Bia, you know, didn't hear the, the whistle and was thought he had still had to go for the ball. So yeah. both were were silly. And if there's a good part of this, it wasn't uh, anger or discipline yeah. or a, a, a defect in the character, yeah, which so. I think would be more worrying. I think the team this season has played with a much more disciplined approach uh, than last season, maybe. Gareth, uh, while, while we've got okay. you on there, do you want to have a crack at the competition? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Good, good. You've got the uh, chance to win a pair of tickets to Sunday's game. Uh, five questions. Uh, we can only take your first answer. You should know the the first one because uh, the first caller on air was correct with that one. So, I'll fire yeah. away. In which country was Tony Fernandez born? Malaysia. In which month did Tony Fernandez complete his takeover of the club? August. That's two out of two. Question three. Who was the first signing of the Tony Fernandez era at Loftus Road? Sean Wright Phillips. Oh, another one bites the dust. Gareth, thank you for joining us tonight and uh, enjoy okay. Sunday's game. Cheers, Gareth. Over the view of Gareth and uh, God, they, they keep slipping up, don't they? They get one right and then they keep slipping up. I'm going to ask another one with loaded bullets. Um, there's been a, a lot written in the press about Mark Hughes' position being under scrutiny and if we lose Sunday, Mark Hughes is gone and you'll be looking at Harry Redknapp, you'll be looking at Capello, I don't know. There's been so many names mentioned, but I think uh, the reality is that Mark Hughes remains a, a very long-term prospect for this football club. Yeah, very much so. I mean, you, you can't really blame Mark for the position we're in. I mean, obviously fans will talk about selection and, and some things like that, but, you know, we're a vastly more consistent team that we were and I, I say my very my very first statement you know we went to the Emirates and we walked away thinking oh we could have won that game yep. and we were disappointed the team has um, got the makings of a great team and I think Mark has the ability to get the best out of them the, the players have come out and support the dressing room is together and uh, I'm an old-fashioned guy that believes in stability um, and give people time uh, you don't need Creepyard does not need uh, managers being changed every year or every few months, um, and it's going to achieve nothing. I really believe that. I, all my business life, 
I believe in stability, and that's uh, what's kept us going. You were at the training ground, I know, on uh, Tuesday, I think it was, and before training started, you said to Mark, I just want to have a quick little word with the squad and yourself and your staff. What did you say to them? Because I know there were people that came off that training ground feeling almost 10 feet tall because they were inspired by what you said. Well, <laughs> just... just no, I'm that's what Stefan told me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> in French. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I think we, I just want to reiterate that as a chairman, I was happy with the way things were going, not happy about the league position. I reminded everyone that cream eventually rises to the top, and I wanted to, uh, you know, you can't avoid as a player when anyone's seeing the press all the time, and I can say 90% of it is, is not true, and I wanted them to hear it from the horse's mouth that I was uh, fully behind Mark, and as were the shareholders, um, and we just got to keep doing the right things. You know, we haven't had luck, but I don't want to go on and on about luck. You make your own. You make your own luck. Yeah. And uh, we have enough quality in that squad to be in a much better position than we are. So I just want to reaffirm that I'm not someone who's going to panic. I want them to be calm, focus on the game, get behind the manager, which they are, and not be distracted by what they're reading in the press or what fans are saying on Twitter, um, and come into Reading with the right approach. I think you'll see a terrific atmosphere against Reading on, on Sunday. Still tickets left for that, Pete. A- I absolutely. must admit. Oh, what is it? Oh, oh, I always forget this number. There's so many different numbers. What I'm a big game. You 08 triple four triple seven double oh seven. And we must make the point that the the reason there are so many tickets left, or the reason there are tickets left, is because Reading have only taken the top tier of the school end, so the lower tier is available for QPR Yeah, fans. I, mean, I think there's one game that you know we... We need the 12th uh, we man. Need, we need y- your 12th man, and, and QPR fans have been unbelievable at, at the Stoke game and the Wigan game. Yeah. This is uh, this is the time where we need you to come in and give us your, your 12th man support. I was so going to ask you about Twitter, but we've got, a, we've got a, another phone. We've got Jason on air. Good evening, Jason. Hi there. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. You're hey, through uh, to Tony Fernandez live on London calling tonight. Have you got a question for the QPR chairman? Yeah, I have. Uh, with regard to the ground move and possible new stadium, just wondered if there's any progress or what update. I mean, there's things. You stole my thunder, Jason. I was just about. That was my next question. But <laughs> all on. right, sorry. <laughs> Tony, the, the new stadium because there's been a lot of talk yeah. In the press. We've been. Uh, I've, 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 I've played it down deliberately because I don't want to detract from the, the main thing, which is the pitch. But uh, Phil and myself, uh, Rebecca, and. Um, some of our consultants have been working hard. We had another meeting uh, just a week ago. Um, I'm not at liberty to say ex- exactly what because some of these you know, will be bidding with other people. But it's progressing. Nothing's slowing us down. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can announce something in the not-too-distant future. Tony, where do you see um, people are talking about 45,000 and then some people will say, hang on, you're, you're playing here on Sunday and it's not a sellout at the moment. Mm. Where do you see the 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 capacity being in what region roughly because I know a lot of fans would be interested in it. <coughs> well I, I've always felt you know anything from 35 to 45,000 uh, you believe is achievable bums on yeah, seats yeah I think so because if you know if we're playing good football and uh, we have a nice stadium you know I'm, I'm good at filling things up <laughs> uh, we started with two planes and uh, we now have 120 planes uh, and we fill them up if, if you have a good product people will come and we're in a great city in London, yes, there's a lot of competition around with uh, you know other clubs in this part of the world, but um, yeah, my, I don't have an exact number in my mind. But uh, if you're conservative, maybe uh, thirty-five thousand. If you're middle of the road, forty. And if you have a bit of balls, 45,000. So well, we will see. see. The, the time will tell on that one. Do you want to have a crack at the competition while we've got you on air, Jason? Uh, yeah, go on in. Okay, so your chance to win a pair of tickets to Sunday's game against Reading. Uh, okay, question one: In which country was Tony Fernandez born? Malaysia. Question two, in which month did Tony Fernandez complete his takeover at the club? August. Question three, who was the first signing of the Tony Fernandez era at Loftus Road? Jay Barton. It was, three out of three, the pressure's building. Yeah. Question four, tough one this, against which opposition did Tony Fernandez watch the R's play from the lower loft last season? Uh, language. Yeah, I re- yeah sorry. Yeah. I That's that game as well. I'll give you a clue, it was a draw. Yeah, we had a few of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Come I'll on, in. well, you've got to have a guess. I'll give you another clue. It's in, it's it's Ooh. north of London. <laughs> That's not a very good clue, no, really, because there's a lot of clubs. We've played them already this season. 
Okay. Arsenal. No, it's not, unfortunately, and we can't tell you who it is. Thank you for joining us tonight.